Hello guys, James here. Still got a little bit of congestion left in me. Hope you excuse my voice. Uh, I, you know, I want to do a topic today about. I don't. I'm trying to understand some of these women in America. I'm trying to figure out. Uh, you have some some of these women, and uh, and it's particular. Where is their mindset? As far as, and they wondering why some men ain't approaching them. They wondering why the good men that they want, who have the money, who have this sense. Let me tell you something. I don't care if you if it's a woman out there listen to this. I don't care how pretty you are, and how what you do in the bedroom, and how you can put play the nice persona, but later on. That guy is going to figure out your personality. He's going to f find out the real you. And the man, because the look it goes for so long, but the personality is go case in point. I'm about to make my first video. Shout out to this channel. You, uh, did you catch the video, man, or I got to need to run it back? No, I did. Sorry. I'm I'll run it back real fast, man. Just keep you, uh, catch you up on what we're talking about. And these are things that I would not do again in my 20s and 30s. I would not get married. I met my husband when I was 24, and we got married when I was 29. At the time, I thought that this was, like, the ideal situation. I met the perfect age to get married. But what I realized was in the four years that we were married, I grew so much as a person. I graduated from business school, started my own business. I just became such a different person that I didn't feel like he was the best fit for me anymore. And I don't think I could have realized that at 29 when I said yes. If I could do it again, I would have allowed myself to have so much more growth in my life before I made a decision on a life partner. And it's really nothing against that partner specifically, but it was more about the direction that I wanted my life to take. My interests by 35 were unrecognizable to my younger self. And I don't think it would have been fair for me to take him on this journey if I didn't think that he was the right partner for the version of me that was to come. Okay. Oh, let me get that comment. Uh, that was, that's the most important part of it all. things that I would not do again in my 20s and 30s. So the comment reads, let's be brutally honest. After graduating and starting her own business, her ego became inflated. And she thought she was better than her husband. A lot of women do this once they find themselves. But that was a comment to that uh, comment under that video. Um, you know, as the counterpoint to the, to the video, just that so you got it missed. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So, so like I was saying, you know, I don't see a lot of married men or men in general leaving these women behind just because they hit a level of success. Typically, men are looking to bring a woman with them because we understand in order for us to reach our pinnacle, we need the support of a woman. Naturally, in a marriage, as a man, that stability gives you the gives you a, a, that step that you need to make the necessary adjustments to your life to get to the next level. So I'm sure as she was growing, he was growing too. Right. The difference is he was um, taking care of her and um, so now she don't she don't she didn't really have the pressures that he had and uh, maybe that was coming out through the relationship with her building up and him trying to maybe say like all right well we need to balance this out again now because it's going this way and she like oh well no I'm not dog in my life I'm going doing what I'm going to do you know what I'm saying so it don't right. got to be a, it don't really got to be a situation where he was a less than a less than a man. It was just like that's how she got to spin it to make it seem like her decision is the best decision. Because to the outside world, women don't like make, making themselves look like that. Right. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. Go ahead, Vince. You want to say something? Man? Yeah, I was having this this a similar discussion at my workout group because they always like to fight against me. <laughs> they, they love oh man you ain't this they hate they hate to prove me right so a friend of mine was saying that a friend of his son was getting divorced from a lady they had been married for nine years they got married right out of college he's a teacher and she made 
makes like two, three, four hundred thousand. And she came home saying that she wants a divorce. Oh. And and I think what it what it is is that it is you know I me, mean, I just shoot from the hip. I think it's and it should be this way, but it is. I think it's hard for women to respect the man they make so much more than. It's hard to follow. And maybe that's what she was saying. Maybe she's saying, you know, look, I I don't I don't respect him. I think that's what it boils down to. She doesn't respect him. And a lot of these ladies, they they and people in general, they get in these relationships. I think people are going to change. Because she might have said, okay, he's here. He's a truck driver. You know, uh, uh, for instance. And she's a secretary. Okay, I'm a secretary. But I want to be the owner of the company. So I'm going to go to school, get this, this, and this. And I'm going to, I want to be the owner of the company. He might have been okay with just being a truck driver. He don't want to own trucks. He don't want to own the company. He's fine with just being a truck driver. So I think that's a lot of things too when people are fine where they are. And some people say, well, oh, you're being complacent or oh, you're not ambitious. No. Right. Like being a truck driver. Right. Right. And there are women and like that. And a lot of it has to do with respect, man. And, it's, and this money thing is, and then it's, it's pushed so much this strong woman. And I know she's not black, but this strong woman, you don't need no man. Know, be with a man on your level, and and what that means is financially. Let's just keep it real. Financially and education, and if the education don't match the finance, then right. it don't matter anyway. Right. It's being on their level financially. Right. And it's not really being on their level. They really want more. Yeah. If I'm in the seventy, for me to really respect you, you need to be making eighty five. Right. But I say, I guess this is my thing, though, man. Is is. The reason why this is confusing to me is because I'm trying to understand no, it's a woman up there. why does money set the level? So, so say we got a brother making eighty thousand. Say the sister come in, she making a hundred, hundred and forty. Like, but anything else about her jacked up. Like, why are we saying that she on a high level just because she make more money? And see, that's what I'm saying, man. It's just like, you know, going back to the video, we talking about a couple being married and you now essentially blowing off your husband because now you done acquired a couple dollars. Like, that's that's literally what it is. So you're going to get rid of all of your protection. You're going to get rid of all of his provisions. You're going to get rid of the way my man love on you. You're going get to get rid of the way my man, you know, take care of you when you're having issues. Your, your car blowing up, you know, here got the jack stands out fixing your car you gonna throw yeah. away all of that right because you done acquired a couple dollars right and another thing i think too is that the 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 vows of marriage and the one is not being played out in marriage it's mine yeah. and yours we're partners no we're one so whatever it is we're one if I'm making 50 and you making 60, that's our 110. Right. And your 60, my 50 is ours. And I think that that's the thing that's missing nowadays is the oneness. Right. And we building together. You know? Right. Because, it, I mean, it's, it, it's hard out here. I, I feel, you know, yeah. sometimes I feel sorry for the, for the brothers. And, I mean, but you just need to, to really be on your square and really pick right. Your bro, you know. Yeah. These sisters, yeah, right. I mean, it's different with these sisters nowadays. I mean, you gotta yeah. realize a lot of them, they never had no father, they never had no no father figure, so all they've been taught is independent, get your own money, don't depend on no man, you can't depend on no need. You might have kids around the block. Yeah, so, yeah. He's I wanna say, I got uh, see Chloe wanna say something, then we're gonna go to uh, the balance. You wanna say something, Chloe? Um, uh, Go to the balance, and I'll, I'll get back in. All right. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, I was going to say, like, um, like I was piggybacking off of that before, um, but, um, like, a lot of the time, people um, don't realize, or women, because um, 
women don't realize like the how men enable them to get to the position that they get to and, and, and because of the the vows because men I think men I don't want to just keep saying men because I I'm a man that's what, so I can say that from my perspective me personally I would take my vows serious and um and in the relationships I've been in even if it's just like a a a, a, a verbal agreement you, you know men take them more serious in, in comparison than women so like they don't understand how um the sacrifices that he might have made for her to be able to get to that position that she was in and then now it's like all right now you got here now let's stabilize it now so i can now do whatever i'm trying to do because i don't think it's normally not those situations where you get in with somebody who don't have the same ambition as you because normally that's how that's like like attract like so those are the type of conversations that are being had so um it may be seeming like like as a man you would know or, or i would think because I, I i feel like i've been in that type of situation before i would feel like or right, i know me myself um i'm gonna get to where i'm, I'm gonna get to but she need my help you know what i'm saying because she don't have the insight that i got she don't have the foresight that i got you know um it's to be the intangibles that women don't really understand so even when you just like plug in little ideas that they might not really notice and or whatever the case may be so then when you get to a certain point then it's like all right my turn now and um the sacrifices that they may need to make they feel like um that's not something that i should be doing for a man and that's where the line start getting skewed because it's like um the vows again like what he was saying is the vows aren't being taken seriously it's like oh yeah um that's not what i signed up for not knowing that this is exactly what you signed Brother here, right on the dog. Hello. Hi, sweetie. Hey, mom. Why were you and daddy talking about NJ? Hello. It gets interesting in that. Uh, this is the reason why some men are. Conclusion of why guys don't approach girls. Let's go to work. <laughs> Appreciate everyone's feedback on why guys don't approach girls anymore. I have multiple points to bring up. So for the people who use the excuse of like guys won't go up to girls anymore because they're afraid of coming off as like or weird, like that's not a thing. If you're not and you're not weird and you go up to a girl, like it's just not a thing. But I understand where you guys are coming from, from other girls saying that they don't feel comfortable when guys do that, but I think that girls are just saying that when a guy genuinely is creepy, and I hope all of you guys are not generally creepy. There are some creepy people out there. Whatever. Also, some people huh? are like, well, I'm not gonna like find my wife like at a bar or whatever. But then like, what does that say about like you? Like, you know, if you're the type of person who would be at a bar, then why would another type of person who would be at a bar not be, you know, possible love interest. Okay? Anyways. What? <sighs> okay. Um, I'm not sure exactly what she's saying. I don't even think she knows what she's saying, but I will dissect a few of the points that she made. Number one, when a young lady decides whether or not a guy is creepy, is she usually depending upon her attraction level towards that guy, right? So if there's a guy and he's 6'2", and he's handsome, he's got good hair, he's in shape, and he comes by and he drops flowers off, he comes by and he gives flowers to this young lady, she's going to think, oh, that's so sweet, that was such a nice gesture, oh, it was so sweet that he did that right now, if a different guy who was maybe 5'7", five, 5'8", five, out of shape, glasses, poor hygiene. If he did the same exact thing, she would think he was a creep. The idea that a man who approaches a woman is creepy is subjective. It's completely subjective. And it depends on whether or not the young lady's interested in you. So when a young lady says, oh, it was creepy, blah, 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 
what she's saying is I was not attracted enough to him to appreciate or think that the gesture that he made was sweet or nice, right? Their attraction level dictates and determines whether or not the behavior or action that the guy engaged in was creepy. It's completely dependent upon attraction level. So I appreciate what she's trying to do and how she's trying to articulate these points where she's doing a very poor job of doing, right? She should probably take some public speaking classes or some or, or something, but I, I understand the route that she's going. So no, it is completely dependent upon, am I attracted to him? Do I think he's attractive? Do I think he would be a good suitor for a relationship or a hookup or, or whatever it is that they're looking for, right? That depends on whether or not the guy's attractive. If he's not attractive, it's creepy. If he is attractive, it's sweet. Exactly. And she appreciates you. Exactly. Well, the thing I just genuinely do not understand is why guys don't approach girls anymore, like while they're out at the bar. Maybe guys just don't approach me, and that's like a personal problem I need to address at a later date. But I feel like, like in my head, the typical thing that guys are supposed to do is like they see a cute girl across the bar, and they come up, they make the first move, like very old school romance, you know? Ladies, we're not waiting around for that anymore. The time is over. We are not giving men the opportunity to sit on their ass anymore. If they don't have the balls to do it, do it yourself. If you see a cute guy, make that move. Um, I did that last weekend or two weekends ago. I do now know that this man follows me on TikTok, so he might be watching this later. So here's a nice little show for you. We were at Vinyl in South End and we saw these really cute guys and we were like, if they're not going to make the first move and they don't have the balls to do it, we're going to do it. So we got our bartender, we sent them three shots, we ordered ourselves two shots. That way they look up, they see us whenever she tells them, we cheers, they come talk to us, and now the rest is history. So ladies, shoot your shot. One thing I just did. Okay, listen, I'm not, listen, I'm not mad at her for shooting her shot. I will say this, the rejection rates would certainly go down if more women did shoot their shot at guys. You would see rejection rates go way down. Now, she mentioned, I feel like guys are supposed to make the approach. Okay, now I will say this. Most guys are not approaching today simply because of the climate that we live in. They don't want to be perceived as weird or creepy. They don't want to have a, a case against yeah. them. Right. And honestly, quite just kept, a lot of times, guys are more afraid of rejection than, than women are. And I think that is it's it's true hell that. for guys. Listen, yeah. if you are a dude and you are afraid of rejection, listen, you need to get over that, right? You cannot be more afraid of rejection than, than women are. You, you, can't, you can't do that. If you believe a young lady is sending you signals, make the approach. If she, if she says no, then she says no. That is the worst thing that she can say to you is no. A lot of you guys are so afraid of hearing a no that you, Oh no, well I don't want to approach her, what if she says no, she's sending me signals and I believe she's turning at me while I'm in the gym, she's turning to be working out, she comes up to where I'm at, she's always in my space, but I, don't, I just don't know, so I won't make the approach because I'm scared she's going to say no, but I'm like, man, it, it's really not that deep, man, make the approach, if she says no, then go back to your workout, carry on with your day, enjoy your evening, it, it's really not that big of a deal, right, now, the idea that she, the idea that women should make the approach, women have more balls than men. <sighs> Again, the rejection rates will go down. You will see, uh, I do believe you would see a lot more connection, connections being made, but at the same time, she's not going to see you as that confident guy, right? The, the confident guy who makes the approach, right? right? Because that's what confident guys do. They yeah. make the approach, yeah. right? She said it herself. If he doesn't have the balls to do it himself, then you do it. So immediately, that puts the woman in the masculine position. That puts her in the lead. Yeah. And if you are allowing young lady to make the approach to you, you are allowing her to lead the interaction. Yeah. 
Good point. So, my advice, level up, get in the gym, put yourself in a position to receive signals from young ladies. If you believe you are getting a signal, make the approach. If you get shot down, great. If you don't, great. But I'll tell you what, it's much better for you to make the approach and be perceived as confident and get shot down than it is to allow her to make the approach and you get accepted and then her see you as not confident. Her see you as some shy, reserved, meek guy. Because later on, let's say it does go further, it's going to be harder for her to now see you as that confident, masculine guy because of that first interaction. Mm. If you're confident, you make the approach and it goes right, you're in the leading position. You lead the interaction. You're perceived as that confident, strong dude who made the approach in the gym, bar, church, whatever the setting may be. You're now seen as that guy. No, he approached me. He had the guts. He had the stones to come and approach me. That's my advice. Stop being a chicken. Stop bring, being afraid of rejection. Rejection is normal. It's a part of life. If you can't handle it, grow up and level up. That's it for me today. Building and protecting wealth is more daunting uh, than ever. Amid global market well, volatility, no shame, stock market losses, there is and rising inflation have left investors about with these women out here, these three or Ground floor is here Watch to help. This. Today's lesson is for all the scheming, conniving 304s out there always looking for a check. Look at a trap of man that's got a lot of money with a baby. Sometimes you may get exactly what you're looking for, riding off in the sunset with 18 and 21 years worth of checks. And sometimes you might just end up homeless on the streets. And when you're for the streets, you get treated accordingly, like the street alley cat that you are, especially when you're messing around with a married man. That's the message for Canadian Alexandra Wright, the 52-year-old baby mama of Matthew Knowles. And for some strange reason, this woman is still out here doing interviews after 13 years, trying to somehow hold Beyonce accountable for her sleeping with Beyonce's father while he was married to Beyonce's mother, getting pregnant and then pushing out a side baby. For the umpteenth time, this idiot is doing an interview blaming the daughter of Matthew Knowles for her struggling life. And of course, as always, the media jumped all over this foolishness with silly headlines like this. It says, my son is Beyonce's half-brother and wonders why she doesn't love him. This is just so backwards and manipulative. And the person behind all of this working in cahoots with the slimy media is none other than Alexandra Wright herself. Take a second to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the notification bell for all updates. Today is not just a word, but the phrase of the day is close your legs to married men. That's what I want everybody to type below in the comments. Whatever happens after you normally open your legs to a married man is your own fault. All right, but before we get started, it's two things I want to clear up because I know you have a lot of side 304s. They see stories like this. They get all emotional thinking about their baby daddy and their jacked up situation. And then they try to come and defend nonsense like this. This woman is not homeless. This woman is not in a shelter. And this woman is not living in a trailer. This woman lives in a five bedroom home in LA. I repeat, this woman is not living in a trailer. She's living in a five bedroom home in LA County. And then Number two, she's not coming at Matthew Knowles because Matthew Knowles still pays her child support. No, it's not the amount that she wanted. And there's obviously some contact between him and their son. What she's upset about is that Beyonce won't meet her son. That's what this whole circus is about right now. But yeah, let's continue. Matthew Knowles, most known for shaping the careers of his daughters, Beyonce and Solange Knowles, along with some of Beyonce's childhood friends, is once again in the news concerning his side baby, the one that he had with a Canadian groupie, some failing former actress that's not known for doing anything besides having an affair with a married man, pushing out his baby, and complaining about how bad of a sister the side baby's big sister Beyonce is. Over the last 13 years, it never fails. Every time this woman needs more money or attention or something, 
She's hitting up the news reporter people to go after her child's sister. And Alexandra, I'm telling you, ma'am, at this point, you're too old for this and it's getting tired. In fact, I've been through with you and your sob story that you seem to come out with every male leap year. Just over it. In the latest episode of The Days of Our Lives, Miss Alexandra here is talking to the paper once again. She's telling these folks that her son is always asking why Beyonce doesn't love him. She's sitting up here telling this story while attempting to cry like she's some sort of victim. Matthew Knowles was still married to his ex-wife Tina Knowles when he got Alexandra pregnant. And then after being married for 29 years, Tina filed for divorce in November 2009. The divorce wasn't final until two years later at the end of 2011. Many believe the baby produced between Matthew and Alexandra had a lot to do with Tina Knowles filing for divorce. But during the period between the initial filing and the finalized divorce, two children have been born, fathered by Matthew Knowles, a son that's now 13 years old from Alexandra, and a 12-year-old daughter with some bopper, a former pole worker, professional streetwalker, whatever she was. Matthew Knowles was doing the most. You had this marriage for three decades. These famous daughters, the family made millions together and separately, and you messed up that legacy with two side babies? Well, at least one is a bona fide side baby. Sounds like the second was made while going through the divorce. Either way, both of them out of wedlock, and it was out of order. He didn't need either of these women coming into your family, messing up the legacy, holding your daughter accountable because Beyonce is the only one they ever come for. They never say anything about Solange. Why was the kid not asking why Solange doesn't love him? So the same attention that they want from Beyonce, they're not giving any of it to Solange. And why would you blame his daughter anyway for not wanting to have a relationship with him? Hey, it's very easy to see. We all know why. Beyonce is the one with the bank. See, when all of this happened years ago, Beyonce terminated her father as her manager and the media ate it up. But I've been sitting back for years realizing this was strategy. Matthew Knowles was getting paid for Beyonce as her manager. So when she terminated him as her manager, that yearly income of millions instantly got shut off. So there's no big child support checks to collect because now the way his bank account is set up, that millions that he was getting before, well, he's not getting that anymore. Now it's five below. It's five beyond. Almost. Well, that's kind of crazy, man. You see how some of these women are? Man. But let's go with this video, man. Where's that video I'm looking for? Uh, this one. I think that's bogus. I'm not going to sign a piece of paper that says that if you leave me, I get nothing. A man to provide does not make you a gold digger. This is mostly for the black community. I know I have some people that are white here. I'm like, I love you guys a little I ain't his mate. I don't want to serve. Okay. Well, if he got everything, what did you think he need from you aside from... Let's get right into it. My last relationship, we broke up because he asked me to marry him, but then he asked me to sign a prenuptial agreement, and I said absolutely not. I think that's bogus. I'm not going to sign a piece of paper that says that if you leave me, I get nothing. Like, no, I think that I should have half of everything that you've worked this is the way. your entire life for. This is the way. And I think that's fair. She, and that's the thing, right? Now, her, you can tell from her beauty and aesthetics, right? Thick body, you can tell. She probably had a guy that was well off to choose her. And that guy's a man thinking, I'm not gonna give him. Like some of these guys out there, right? The woman they're going for, they say, I want the guy making 500,000, and I want a guy making this, and a woman like her can probably get him. She got there, got to the finish line, and got to, oh, 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 nope. Prenup, rightfully so, the truth came out. Congratulations to you, brother. You dodged a bullet, because if not, might as well play DJ Khaled and saying, congratulations, you played yourself. yourself. I have gotten it all. I have gotten it all. Wanting a man to provide 
does not make you a gold digger. And the fact that the black community has become so muddled with the idea of survival being, the, the onus of survival being on the woman, that wanting a man to provide is taboo, and asking a man to provide is something that actually has to be said, is... No, it's not the fact, everyone should have a man as a provider, right? But when you say, oh, I want 100,000, 500,000 million, and I'm sure I got some clips here of that, many of them. 300,000? $500,000? Ideally, my husband needs to be making like six hundred fifty thousand. It's delusional. And that's the problem. That's the problem. So, yes, it is a problem with, the, with what you want and the way you want it. It's embarrassing at best. Hey, other races of women don't deal with this level of, um, I'm just going to say it, zest. This is mostly for the black community. I know I have some people that are white here. I'm like, I love you guys. I love you. Want to kiss my butt? Everyone equally, but this is important for people of color. Wanting a man to provide is and should not be taboo. It's just like with the woman that we just played, right? Where the guy, that guy could have been black, right? He doesn't want to be robbed. Same, same difference. It's the situation here. She's trying to say, oh, all black guys want to be a provider. Far from the truth. They want to provide. Now, women wanting guys to provide the excess amount and provide Gucci bags and Louis bags, guys are not hearing it. I'm not sure. You didn't state what you want. So, how can anyone know? You know, when, when I need, when I need, uh, I made a live the other day. And there are people on the panel, and there are men saying, well, you know, in the modern age, everyone works. Okay, yeah, men and women work in the modern age, and we understand that. You know, the times aren't the same as the 1950s. However, however, if both parties in a household are married and they live together, why, why do we think that the man should not be providing? They tend to be, you know, the kings without kingdoms. I love to call them that. So how can you be a king and not have the desire to provide? I've never, even in Disney movies, I have never seen a king that was substandard. I've never seen a king not provide. As I already explained, you may be looking for a man with extra. But if a man is only making 50, 60, 70,000, even right. 80, right? Depending on the state. It's not easy. The world is getting worse. Yeah. Guys need help now. And guys, I'm not sure if the guys you're dealing with, but most guys aren't going to say, hey, 50-50, they'll say, pay something, pay some bills. Depending on the situation, if you're out here where I am now, no, guys need to do that. But back in the States, depending on the state, New York, you know, Florida, Miami, uh, Florida to be specific, um, California, it's going to be very expensive, but let's go on. Hands up! Mm. Hand up, guys, for more than 90 seconds. What happened? To be specific, um, California, it's going to be very expensive, but let's go on. For all the men out there that go on those male group trips to the Dominican Republic, I'm going to just let y'all know right now, I know exactly what goes on in those trips. I have male friends and they tell me everything. I know exactly what goes on on them trips. Yeah. So what? What do we care? Guys are not even trying to hide it. It's all over the no, internet, actually. No, not. Right? I've never done that. I've never went on trips like that. I, I did it for love. You have a lot of guys that do that, too. But, guys aren't saying, oh, because women have been going on trips to Jamaica for years. They've been going to Africa for years. They've been going to all these different places, all these different excursions, having these girls' trips, and guys weren't now on it. Now, when a girl goes on a girls' trip, the guys are breaking up and they're trying to leave right away. Because guys, guys are not dumb. Guys have woken up. So, yeah, we don't care. We can care less if you know what's going on. It's a lot different than when guys are back home. And if guys looking to go even get some, the difference is night and day. I'm not, I'm not okay in it, but 
who cares what you know emotional damn it y'all got y'all teacups me i'm munching on popcorn but this is what's going down this passport bro has gone viral after he posted a video on social media begging for his subscribers, his supporters to cash up him money because he's mm-hmm. technically stranded in the Dominican. And this right here, you know, it's funny. Yeah. I can't even bash her for putting it down. You know, this is what it is, right? Woman is sitting around, pondering, and waiting. We're waiting for guys to fail. They are. That's like if something happening to me tomorrow. It'll be front page news all over TikTok. It'll be everywhere. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, right? Yeah. Because people are waiting for that. Not even just women, guys too. So, yeah. but this right here, straight up bookie syndrome, right? Who will go to another country and say, I've never spoken on this, by the way, but who will go to another country on borrowed money, right? And that's what he's doing. He went over there and made a lot say, hey guys, can I get some money? And it's like, no, people are not hearing that people are not trying to help you people are not trying to give a grown man money you know when you leave when your back is against the wall you got to fight your way out and that's just what it is so make sure you're prepared make sure you do whatever it takes to make it happen because you're going to need to if you live in that if you live if you're living out of the country or even going to travel right don't go travel with no less than two three thousand dollars and he's over in dr right it's easy to get home he went out there spent all his money on women and then had a hard time getting home that's one thing we can't do, fellas. Mm-hmm. Let's do better. And women be like, I, well, I ain't his maid. I don't want to serve, okay? Well, if he got everything, what do you think he need from you aside from... Damn! And it's everywhere. Oh, absolutely. That's why men don't mind buying... Men don't mind buying... They don't mind buying it. And the reason why most men don't mind buying is because it comes with less of a headache when you pay for it. And it's better when you pay for it. If you pay for it, and it don't come with all of the extras. So put your put yourself in a predicament where he'd be like, I will buy this. I will pay for this service. He'll start compensating you for your services. Pay when you're dealing with somebody that they, they got an agreement, he don't got to keep telling her shit. And, the, and both of them already know what type of time it is. And then men, li- men, men like to see, men like to pay for A lot of them really do. They say that they don't, but they do. Especially when they pay for put single mother because it's like a charitable contribution. Yeah, girl. You get to see what she did with the money. You get to see the children on the internet, their hair be cutting, no shoe. She was going in. It, it, it was a little funny, but... She made a good point though, right? No headaches. And it goes hand in hand with what the girl just said. Oh, I see you guys going out there. I'm not bashing it. I don't fully yeah. support that, but I'm not gonna bash it. Right. I understand too, I understand her logic. I do. I yeah. understand her logic completely. Right. She's an extremely logical woman the way she's thinking, right? She thinks you can tell she's down to earth. She's somebody who can sit around, I don't drink anymore, have a drink with it, and just chop it up about stuff. She reminds me of one of the girls in the hood I used to know back in New York. <laughs> All right, I can try. <laughs> right? You sit around with them playing spades and talk about things like this and they just go in with you for hours. For hours, right? And you sit around a bunch of guys and it could be a bunch of girls sitting around chilling somewhere, right, at a party or something. Have, playing spades games, having a little spades tournament and talking like this. She reminds me. Reminds me a lot about my aunts who are a little older. But, yeah, she's right. And... No need to bash guys for that. I can't bash. I don't bash guys for going around doing that. Because I get it. Is it what they call passport bros? Predators. This is her answer to that. So, she understands, guys. I'm happy. A lot of women... Not a lot of women. <laughs> so... Wait, I'm going to leave it right there. But, uh... This next woman... Wants to be a pro-black sister. Sounded real black. But... This sister got flat for kissing... And you probably seen the video on it's on YouTube and kissing no white supremacist on the cheek. After he say that black black people are 
less intelligent. Check this out. O'Shea Du Jackson, I believe. I wanted this space this to person really reflect racist. what and, we're and able she to deliver in patient care. We've oh, always they, been at oh, the they forefront really of the technology her here. Kissing him on the cheek was a was was a mistake in itself, in the sense of I literally sat at a table with a white boy who is disgusted of, of my, my, my existence. And then I take a photo with him laughing and smiling and kicking in. Um, that was dumb. Recently, Nick Fuente stopped by the Fresh and Fit podcast. But on this special edition of the podcast, he was surrounded with a majority black female cast, which is unusual on Fresh and Fit. But that was set up and conjured up by Fresh and Fit themselves trying to make a situation occur that was either racially motivated or something that would end up going viral. And of course, that is exactly what happened. We all know that uh, Nick Fuentes ended up saying the N-word. He was instigated to do so by not only Fresh and Fit themselves, but the blast that he's on the podcast. But then something else happened. A lady who is black, I don't know if she's African American, but she ended up kissing Nick Fuentes on the cheek. And that picture went viral on Instagram. So viral that people were sending her death threats. Now, who is this person here? The person is called Glodion, uh, G-L-O-D-Y-I-A-N underscore. Now, I don't know this particular young lady. Um, I don't really have an issue with her, and I'm gonna tell you exactly why. Uh, she made an actual um, response to what happened on the podcast and she did receive a, a lot of backlash some people even threatened to take her life and um, she seems Whoa. like again like she didn't know who he was or according to her and that she felt that you know she was coming on the show she had no idea that Nick Fuentes was coming on the show but let me play what she had to say and then I'm gonna come back. Um, so this live is addressing the photo that I took with uh, Nick. Who's a white This supporter? would be my third time on this show and the first two times it was about relationships. You get what I'm saying? Um, men versus women, I'll say that. Uh, so that's, that's what my mind, I miss you too. That's what my mind was on that's what that's what I was prepared for I was prepared to go in and you know um, defend myself as a woman because that's usually what you have to do when you go on that show um, unfortunately that's not what happened this time um, so like I said yesterday when I was trying to do this live that five or ten minutes before the show we see Nick and we confused because we're like, why is this white boy here? We don't even know who Nick is. We never heard of Nick, any of that. Um, my mistake is not questioning it when not using my discernment. That was my mistake. My mistake was not asking questions and just not putting things together um, because I was excited to be on the show because I was mentally prepared to talk about my shit but not about politics. I'm not a politician. It's 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 um terms that y'all are using against me that I don't even I don't even know. Uh but I learned yesterday that YT equals equals white. Um it's just things that, that it, it, it was my bad. I shouldn't even been there, but I was there and because I'm not a person to run away from things as y'all can see because you know I pop that. Um but we gonna address that later. Um I just was like I'm a I'ma see what I can do. I am from Germany, and I'm a white guy, and please, if you do not indoctrinate, if, if you got indoctrinated by an option of a television show, these people that really deserve to be angry on, this is one that made a upcoming black girl into trouble. Okay, but why did you kiss him? Honestly, because I didn't, I did, that was my mistake too, because I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about if I post this, the backlash that I was going to get. Um, I had a conversation with my brother who definitely brought me down to size and made me understand that if I'm, if I, I represent everybody because I represent all black people because I'm a black woman. I'm a black woman. So I represent black people everywhere the fuck I go. 
maybe he was just like, no. I represent black people everywhere the fuck I go and not understanding that I am the face. It doesn't matter if I want to be the face. I'm responsible. I have to be responsible. And in this moment, I just wasn't. I wasn't responsible. I didn't I didn't think about responsibility. I didn't think about if this was going to have an effect or backlash on my community, how my community felt about it, none of that. Even in Even being in it, it was just like, being in a twilight zone i wasn't even articulating the way that i normally would like it was an ambush it was to make us look stupid it was to make us look bad and i I, and i and i and i look stupid like and i don't like the i don't i don't i don't i don't i don't like that so the plot was to get us in get us in this round table to make us all look stupid because we had no idea what we were going to be talking about in the first place did any of us ask no um Kissing him was very kissing him on the cheek was a was was a mistake in itself, in the sense of I literally sat at a table with a white boy who is disgusted of, of my 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 existence, and then I take a photo with him laughing and smiling and kicking. Um, that was dumb. That was stupid. That was just that was dumb as fuck. I'm, I'm, I, that was a dumb as fuck moment. Um, the fact that I I. I understand that you all feel like I don't deserve your grace um, because I should I should have been smarter than that uh, because I look I look smarter than that um, and I was just being my glodian self think and like I said I w- for adventure the lead for climbing I would suggest a lead for splashing for towing it tells you more about for what premium, the premium kind of for capable so the GMC AT4 lineup premium and capable that's per- being my Glodian self think, and like yeah. I said I wasn't um because my my pure existence makes him uncomfortable like what you gonna do bruh cause you really not gonna do nothing all this shit you popping you ain't pop in the front of us to me cause to me he He's he now in realization he's one of the white supremacists that it ain't up front and out with it. It's in a tar in, in intellect or whatever you wanna it is in his intellect. Now guys, I, I wanna say this because she's saying all of that, but I wanna play this particular clip that proves otherwise. And I want Dima to put the arrow on the lady on the white with the glasses. Again, this is the clip where they're saying, Hey, do you uh, want to say the N word? And she's gonna say yes. Say it. Let's play that clip. Hey, what you got? You want me to say it? Yes. Yes. Hey. 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 saying hey nick say the n-word so in my honest opinion again she did apologize but after looking at this receipt it looks like she's lying in my honest opinion okay because at this point you knew he was um a racist there you are telling him to say the n-word now you're acting like oh it's my existence i can't believe like he's against it and there you are you know looking like you're pro-black in one photo like this one here you know, like, there you are pretending that you're so for the black community, and but you're telling the, the white supremacist guy to say the N-word. And again, I don't have, um, you know, no issue with a sister, you know, whatever. If she wants to do that, whatever, okay? And she yeah. did take accountability, but in that accountability, she is not telling the truth, okay? Because she clearly knew that she was doing the wrong thing. Now, again, when I look at her profile, she's a mother, creative producer, artist, all of that. And again, I don't have no real issue with the sister, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, she does what she wants to do, but she's not telling the truth, all right? 
she looks like she's just, you know, a chameleon. No matter what somebody says, she'll do it and she'll say it. But that's just what she's doing. It's not telling the truth. And I, I, I don't know why she didn't feel like people wouldn't have had no receipts with that. Because, again, if you had a problem with that, you would have got up and stood up. And mm. these are what I consider phony or fake pro-blacks. You know, they get on here and they act like they're down with the struggle, they're down with the community, whatever. And then once you get around a white man, you're kissing them on the cheek. Some of the sisters there were twerking on the, uh, on, on Mr. Nick Fuentes. And then, you know, again, you're going to be sitting there and acting like, you know, why these people don't get respect. I just don't know. All right. I don't want to get in trouble for saying something, but I just don't think the young lady's telling the truth. So, again, she needs to go back in. You know, I don't know why she felt like we don't have receipts over here, but we definitely got receipts over here. All right. So, guys, what do you think? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson. And common sense would tell you this guy been banned off of five social media sites. Google, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and everything else in between. And this guy turns around. He says that, you know, he prefers white women and white women only. And then when, when, he, when he was on Just Pearly thing, he mentioned, mentioned to the one woman that was dating him, oh, well, I'm... Well, I'm Italian like you're Italian, but at least I'm not dating a black guy. It's the same person that, that they invited. And I can show you the video on the next video if you want me to. But uh, uh, it ain't so proud about, about you. But why would you, of all the white men, even Logan Paul wouldn't do no stupid shit like this. I mean, <coughs> 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 even he wouldn't do no stuff, dumb stuff like this. I mean, damn, man. But anyway, you know, that's the type of women that that they would kiss a white supremacist. Not just any, you know, guy who's not prejudiced. You kiss a no racist. Like, oh my goodness. Go on the cheek and then act like you said, act all pro-black. It's unbelievable. Unfucking believable, man. But check this out. But look what this one woman said. Going back to this. What's the name video? Here at the Y. And then you expect the reps that you men to take it seriously. This particular to the women who think like this. Is that? We're giving new inventors a chance. I love to take care of my husband. Submissive it doesn't mean that we're a slave to our husband. As much as men like to pretend they don't like high maintenance women, the truth is they love it. Are complaining so much about the passport, bro? But that you're not would. looking at the mirror. I don't want to hang around your family. I want to go to the mall. Yeah, man. And this the no black chick. Hey guys, her boyfriend's Welcome Jewish. Back to Water Life. I'm not gonna hold you. Let's get right into it. So the continuation of Passport Bro is a lot of a Western women complain about Asian women are being submissive to their husband. So it's none of your business. Yeah. So we like to be submissive to our husband. You oh. know, submissive it doesn't mean that we're a slave to our husband. Uh, that's all right there, but um, it's none of your business. It doesn't mean we don't have no opinion. It just basically mean we respect the decision for our, our husband to do the decision in our household. It doesn't mean that we have no boys or opinion because, right. trust me, <laughs> you don't want to know who's really in charge. <laughs> but at the end of the day, as an Asian woman, as a feminine woman, I love to take care of my husband. And there's nothing wrong with that. If it's not yours, then it's not yours. I'm looking forward to take care of my child coming up soon. See, and what she said, you don't know who's really in charge, right? Now, that would be a better way to take it. Not all he's trying to control me, right? Right. Cooperating with a man. Of course, a woman has to say so. Right. I know what she was saying, but it's not that the woman are going to be in charge. Women have say so, like especially in the Philippines, right? My wife, she cooperates, but she has to say so. I'm never gonna say, oh, babe, no, what you say doesn't matter, you know. I'm not gonna be one of those kind of guys. That's women thinking, they're thinking guys.
guys just going over there and just taking full advantage. Let me explain what I mean. My wife edits my videos. She also has sort of a say so in how the channel is going to operate, right? Why would I tell her to go sit in the corner? Of course, there's times that needs to happen, but then there's times I need to hear some correction from her and, and what she has on mind, of course. They think guys are just going over and just, oh, you do this and you do that. No, that's all guys are going to do. Right. He, he, if you he value her insight. took the time to sit back and listen and understand how these guys are that are leaving, you would get it. Oh, absolutely. I love taking care of the house. You know, laundry is done, dishes is done, cooking. I love doing these things. And what is the problem with that? If it's not for you, it's not for you. Come on, don't shame us. Men, they're just looking for these women that they feel like it's not going to challenge them. Because we love what are we doing. You heard that? She said she loves doing those things. I love it. That's the difference. She doesn't take it as, a, oh, no, I don't want to do it. I, I can't do that. No. You guys are in the this. And here you are stressing about what we love. <laughs> and then you're complaining about us. As Asian women, we're getting a good man. And also, you tell us that we have a, we're less spoken. Last time I checked, I always talk my idea, my opinion to my partner. I am not a robot! So I don't understand where did you come from, that idea that Asian people are very less spoken and we don't have no mind that we cannot speak to our own opinion. And also you told us that we have less opportunities. Where? Because we can work hard and we can find that opportunities if we wanted to. But some Asian women, some feminine women, they choose to be a housewife. They choose to be a mother. And some of them even still a good housewife and a mother and still rocking their world to be a career woman. Guess what? So. And, and women do do that, you know. The same thing women complain about at home, you know. There's women that are out there getting the bag out here. And I'm not saying it's like my dead West. Of course, it's like that everywhere, but you know what I mean? There's more women complaining to where you find a woman, even from back in the day, they say, you know, I wish I would have taken all the time for myself. Where these women are saying, no, they're going out, they're chasing the bag, and they're taking care of the home. Because they feel they have to. Because they feel it's something they want to do. Not even that they have to. It's something they want to do. They'll feel great not doing that. I don't know, like, you guys told us we're uneducated, but it sounds like you guys are not uneducated at all. And also, you've been living in your own bubble. It's crazy, man. You are complaining so much about the passport, bro, but that you look, you're not looking at the mirror. What are you been missing? What right. you need to be fixed in your personality and right. what need to be improved. Right. Emotional. Right. That's what it is. That was her now, you know, of course her English was the top notch, like most Latinas, but it was cool. I understand her points where she was hitting at, and she made it clear, you know, sit back, think about what's happening, think about what these women are saying. Right. Watch some videos and learn something, right? Watch what these women are saying. Don't. So I'm taking it as, okay, they're just clapping back. Listen to what they're saying when they're clapping back. Right. Right? Right. They're saying, your men are coming over here. They're saying, right. we're doing the things that you won't do. So why are you complaining? No matter right. what type of severe asthma you have to aspire. I'm about to finish this video off. Right. It's about personality. If you don't have no personality, that's what's going to keep the relationship. But no, what it is... Let me finish it up how Western women is. They want to argue, fight with you. No, you wrong. Then they, they, they get on a grand scale in front of their family, on the computer or something like that. Just just blurting everything out. Blurting about your sexual life. Blur, you know, cutting the other half down. <laughs> Running the mess about he ain't doing it, doing that in the bedroom. His income is this. I mean, run all kind of things down. And they run their men down. So, you know, he's, he's just too nice. Oh, you know, he don't put me in check. I heard women say some off-the-wall stuff. You know, so 
why would a man keep going back and forth raising his blood pressure over something like that? Why would a man want to go through something like that? When, uh, when it was designed for a woman to be his helpmate. And this is what the passport bros who want to get married are doing. Now are there some guys over there, like he says on them, they do what they do. But what does that tell you? As you know, to the women who object to it. You know, maybe the reason why you're single, and even because look at look at your life around you. Look at the women in your life here. Why is some women around you that are married and you're not married? Why is that you, you, you your coworker, your sister, your aunt could be married 24, 30 years, and my heart goes out to the widows or whatever. Or women have been abused. Like I said, I, my heart goes out to you. It's the women who got this entitlement that you just think because you're educated, you this and you that, that you just want to control everything. And it's, it's going, you're going to have four choices. You can either deal with a man who you think can put you in your place, who don't have nothing to offer, who, who yeah, he can give you something that's validates you in the bedroom give you that drama and argument that you want because you you, you, you know you raise a masculine lead to point it at least to domestic violence or and you can beat that kind of man or you can finally uh, or pick a go to another woman who trying to have a personality of a man who holds herself as the man who conduct herself as the man since you can't stand men so much, you could that's your option number two. Or five option number three. You know, that maybe you'll find some maybe it might be a man of another race. And you could just roll all over, roll all over him and, and then because but you know, as long as he keep but he don't have no problem giving you money. As long as you can just sweet talk him or whatever. And he don't stand up to your bull crap sooner or later. That's that's the option number the option number three. But th what it comes down to is that it comes down to companionship. You give and you give in a relationship. That's why some people are married. And people who have been married, been married for still married, happily married, understand this. Because I would rather listen to a happily married person. Then listen to somebody who is single and, and trying to play you know, foot, foot, foot games and mind games. It gets worn down mentally after a while when you get to a certain age in life. It's cute when you're young, but when you get older, it gets, it gets old real quick. You know, you, you, don't, you, don't, you, get, you get tired. But, and then you have the women that is that in the 40s and they'd, they'd have been the cute girl stage in the 50s and 60s and so on. They still don't understand it, but now they want it. They, 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 they're not, and it's kind of hard to get a woman in that age category to be in alignment and agreement, like with a younger woman that understand what it's like the relationship because she's already set her, her ways how she get to her forties and fifties and sixties. So now you have a lot of women in forties and fifties and sixties. That's the reason why you know they set their ways, you know, and you have to want it. Keep not only you could get the relationship and be an attractive woman, but it's keeping the relationship. That's the part. That's the part. I'm not saying you gotta be a, uh, let somebody walk over you and be a robot, but man, but but nobody will be you know make them feel like they're less than a man, screaming, hollering at them, belittling them, make them feel like they're a boy. Some women do that. They do they use the manipulation and control. When, do that. So men, men are just clock checked out mentally. That's what it comes down to. And it's like, hey, I'll just wait. Oh, no, 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 no. until in the only and, and, and you got the last session. You need to, like she said, go sit in the mirror and ask God what is wrong with me, and let and wait for His voice. That's the best advice because you can't change no grown person, whether it's a man or a woman. You can't change it. And David, oh, I ain't going to do it. Well, no, no. They want, no. Let them, don't argue with you. Let them argue with God with that. 
Or, you know what I'm saying? When it gets to a certain degree of life, stop arguing. Don't argue with a fool. Let life, let life and time show them. And so when they leave this earth one day, you know, God said, I, I try to talk to you. But you were just so argumentative. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. So, hey. Man, you know, man, if you, know, if you find a good woman here, fine. If a woman don't, I mean, if you're a good man and, and it get, you get dogged out, it's time to leave, man. And you don't find a woman here that don't appreciate you because you don't make a certain amount of income, screw it. Like I said, my mentality is like, man, it's too many women on the planet. And it's time for men to treat women like, you're just another woman on the planet. That's just what it is. You ain't nothing perfect with God made hundreds and duplicate all over the world. What you won't do as a woman, another woman will. And will come into a line with, line with me. I ain't got to play this bad boy, talk tussle. No, we ain't going back and forth. I ain't proving that. No, it's about companionship. I ain't got to go, go through all that. I'm not staying. I ain't proving nothing. You know, shoot. It's to me, you know. I find somebody who who collab with me. What for? You know, and, and I ain't your right height, I ain't your right weight, I ain't your right look. I'm 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 still the man. And I got options. And it, and I got the and got the income. It's a wrap. And oh well. And, and and you you man for all walks of life. Man, don't put up with that stuff. Man, forget that. You got women all over the world. You got women all over the world. Whether you're a white man, short, thick, fat, bearded, whatever. Somebody wants you. You know, you might be thin and bald in somewhere. But some women will want you. Because they want your personality. And that's something that these women here don't understand. That. They're so caught up in the physical part. And they're physically attracted people. But they mentally ain't right. You can meet the you can meet the perfect what you think is a perfect looking dude could be a psycho killer. A abuser. A stalker. But hey, you do you. And here's a lesson in life. Learn what the personality of the man is. Behind the look. That'd be my advice. You know what it's like I'm looking for a woman. I'm I I, I, I want somebody attractive but she ain't got to be extremely, you know, beautiful. You know, to the point that she so can eat Eric and can see it. No, give me somebody got some wisdom and got some sense. That's what I want. I want the personality because that's the personality. The looks is going to fade. Once you live with the person, it's the person, person you got to deal with. And invest your time, your resources, and your investments with. Forget all that stuff, man. You know, and, and if, if American women, whatever race, color, creed, don't want to be bothering you when you hear, let them let the American women need to know you ain't, you you only you're just another woman on the planet. What, what, what you won't do, and you gonna see most most of the men get their income up and shoo, they gone. And salute to the men that do it. I salute you. And and women, it ain't like the woman said, ain't none of your business. Don't worry about what those men do. Because hell, if they was over in America, you'd be making them spend ten times more of the money that they did. Get your trick bag up. Get them to do this, girl. You got women that doing that. And they, they, they just confess. They said, I'm going to make a video about that. That one woman. Come out of her own mouth saying this. Alright? You know? But you know, you, you guys, man, don't worry about Man, rem remember. There's more women on the planet, guys. Um, regardless of what you look like, you're short, you're thin, whatever, fat, whatever. Average looking, whatever. You may not be the handsomest guy on the planet, but somebody wants you. And it might be a very attractive woman. Think about it. And they'd be like, they'd be like how is that possible? She'll be hating on you. You, you know, you may not look like a, 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 a man that will walk off a magazine. But you, can, you might be pick up the baddest looking woman in, in, in Brazil. Because of your personality. That's what women here don't understand, in the West don't understand it. Until they understand it, then they get it.
That's why they're going to lose and be alone. You're going to have all these attractive looking women. Why are they alone? Let, let, me, let me go and holler at her. And then you see how psychotic and crazy she is. Oh, that's the reason why the men don't want to be bothered. And she's back again. She can get a man, but she can't keep a man. All right, then, ladies and gentlemen, hope you like this video. Share, like, subscribe. Till next time, take care. Be blessed.